we're back again. So one month yeah. later, we're talking about markets. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Yeah, it's been a month already. I can't believe it. It just came around so fast. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like we, we, were, we were discussing them. We were like, oh, my, we're going to go live on Instagram. We're going to check this out. And, you know, as as old guys as we are, we, we still mess up with all, everything. You know, we were back on recording on Zoom. It's so crazy, right? Trading the decks, as we know, and well, let's, let, let, let's talk about trading because last time we really we were talking about like one hour or something like this, and we felt like oh, it's quite too much. It's just for us, but nobody wanted to listen. Yeah. So long, I guess so. Let's let's switch right over to the markets because um, when I look at the markets right now, and I have the the, uh, the DAX here and also the U.S. markets, they're quite tumbling. Or what do you think? Yeah, I mean, look, we've we, we've certainly had a, a massive push up through through January and yeah. uh, let me share early, screen, by the way, early February. Yeah, go for it. Let's have have a look. Um, yeah. You know, a little bit of a pullback. It, it's not unreasonable. I think you know uh, the catalyst for this was PMI yesterday. Uh, ordinarily, this would be kind of good news. But it's, you know, I think the market's taken it like, okay, maybe, maybe it's going to take a little bit longer for uh, the inflation to settle. Yeah. But overall, I don't see a negative market. I mean, what, what are we looking at here? We're looking at the DAX. Oh, right. and I think, I think also, I think it's fair to say that look at the DAX. I mean, if, if yeah, this is my market. While yeah. we're really above 15,300, nothing, nothing has changed. U.S. markets came off quite a bit on on the the PMI uh, yesterday, but yeah. DAX is holding. Look, we're on a okay, we're on a five minute chart. But if you look how the DAX is holding, fifteen three hundred to fifteen two hundred, it's yeah. at the moment just can't shift it. I was buying from those levels earlier on, and normally, I don't like to buy from a level for more than three times. Mm -hmm. But every time it's hit again, it's rallied. Every time it's hit again, it's rallied. So at the moment, DAX for me looking looking still very very positive. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you look at this daily chart, all you, I mean, pretty obvious we we're going so sideways. Now look at this. I mean, it's just one line explaining everything, right? Yeah. And and also you have like this resistance zone over here, not here, but I you know, something exactly. around that area, like 15, let's say 15, six, whatever. And yeah. this is everything it goes. So we're going sideways. And for me, I'm, I totally agree. It's not really a sign of weakness. It's more a sign of strength. Although yeah. we just go into consolidation mode. Um, exactly. What I really like is, you know, you, you have this fake spike over here on the ninth, you know, mm. So everybody goes, okay, I'm going to buy. It's it's a breakout. No, it's not, you know. And yeah. then you're just falling back into the sideways market and consolidation. If you're like, um, I mean, you know, I'm totally, well, lost. Let's keep it that way. And Absolutely. you're right. If, if we and, go to American markets. Oh, just just wait, wait, wait one second before you go. Yeah. So see on the daily, just below the current support, Look at all of the consolidation, all of the overlapping candles around right. the 15100 level. If you see that, that yeah. kind of tying in with that Bollinger Band, I think that's going to be a great buy level where it might we might get some early sellers coming in through the yeah a little little bit higher right into that. If you were using um, that would probably be a sort of a point of control, the 15100 levels, where we can just see market has been really efficient around those levels. True. And I, you could get a fake uh, false break through 200. Well, not so much false, but but a, a break through there and it, the buying starts coming in from around those 15100 levels. So actually, that's where I'm looking for at the moment, just a little breakout, and then we'll get some buying in from those levels. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Maybe we can come back and review yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's why I like the Bollinger Bands, because they're quite, well, you know, they, they show a lot of, well, movement, volatility, and it's like a miracle. They happen to be at 
exactly that zone where all the action happens as well, like right, right here, like 5100, something like that. I'm pretty yeah. sure, right, if market breaks down, I mean, there's a there's a huge holding line here, right? Somewhere between, I mean, give or take 100, 150 points up and down. It's not that much because still we're on the daily chart. So, and also, yeah. I, I'm I'm quite sure we will see if, if it comes down a bit. I'm quite sure we will see some kind of spike going to the down, maybe just clearing all the lows and just yeah. coming up. You know, like it's always like that one from the other side, you know, just clearing all the buys and limits and then just drops a yeah. bit. Takes a run out. And, you know, who, who knows? This could happen next week on the end of the month. We might see some selling coming into the market uh -huh. and then sort of buying coming into to early March. Yeah. Right. How was your trading recently? I mean, phenomenal, phenomenal. <laughs> great, great trading. Really, yeah. really good. An awesome, uh, had a really awesome January. February's been a little bit slower, but I had a really good early start too. And then, you can see now the market's just kind of going sideways. So I had a lot of those, if you see on the chart, I had a lot of those early buys where you have that support line. There had a lot of those early buys, caught all of those, and then just a little bit shy to buy again before that, that floor could just break. So for the last week or so, it's been pretty quiet, but uh, January, February, it's been a great start to the year. And I think it's been great just seeing the market you know, coming back to life um, again and seeing the volatility back in the market. I think at the moment we're just digesting a little bit of these the, the big moves that we've seen. Well, well, can can you show us just really quick what trade or something where you you are really uh, were looking at? Because you know, last time we were just talking, you know, like like crazy guys, not having a chart at all, and it was all like a bit like theoretical concepts. But now we 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 can share a screen if you have prepared something, just open a chart. I have well, then I haven't prepared anything. But let me let me uh, let me. You know, of course, of course, I haven't prepared anything. You know, we we don't have anything prepared. But right. let let okay. me try and give you an idea of some of the levels uh, that that I've been looking at. Yeah. So let's well, get let's get to the DAX. So can you see that, Willie? Can you yeah, I got it. it. Okay, so let's get rid of some stuff here. Let's get this out of the way. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a 15-minute chart just because we'll be able to spot it a little bit easier. But um, And again, this is totally not prepared. So I'm just going, going a little bit blind here. But basically, my first thoughts, yeah, let me, where are we? February, maybe I go to the uh, four hour chart and I can see when we can, when we get hit these levels, as you can see, totally unprepared here. So this is November, this is no good for us. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so now we're coming into some action. So I guess um, a few things here. Let's get rid of some stuff. So one of the main things, maybe we, we look at this chart. Uh, February, January. Maybe we look at it from the four hour perspective first. Mm -hmm. So what, what we've got here is um, we had, and then I just want to check this. We had the market kind of stalling around these 15, 15,200, 15,100, 15,300 levels. And let's just get rid of all the drawings. Okay. And we'll put a line on here. So what we can see here is that the market broke out right here. And this was actually on the news. This was on, I think it was Fed Day or something like that. I can't remember, but a massive catalyst. The market moved up. All of my guys were screaming, going, why are we not on this move? Why are we not on this move? And I said, look, guys, we cannot get on this move. We cannot get on, on the back of news. 
Uh, and, you know, this all happened in, in an hour, an hour, a few hours. This is 12 hours. It's a four hour chart. But what I said, what, what we've got to be patient now for is the pullback. Right. And maybe let's try and move down uh, some time. Let's, let's see if we can move down to the hour chart. And just an FYI, most of my planning on the chart is done from the hour chart. All my trade planning is, is done from that perspective. And hopefully this is clear for you, William. So we've got this line here, which was really where the breakout happened from. So all I was looking for was that the market was extremely efficient here. See how the market's just been going sideways, 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 a lot of volume in, in this area. And right. then the news comes in and we break out. Yeah. So now my plan is just to sit and be patient and wait for the market to come back into this zone here where the yeah. breakouts happen from. So I got in here. Okay. Yeah. I had a little bit of a push up. I've taken some profits. I haven't right. had the run. But then again, it comes to here and you just see what happened. And I caught all of this run up mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. up to about the 15 actually where i was thinking the market was going to was 15 6 30 and i was wrong by 20 points this is where i get out and yeah. then looking for the market to trade again but this was a huge trade for myself but mm -hmm. then as we start to come back and test it again then i'm not so interested but what we can see is this breakout level has just held and held and held and held and that's why i was saying at, at the beginning the market's just holding that breakout so there's no reason to think that right. this is negative in any sense uh, yeah. but normally just maybe for the guys is i'll trade it twice i don't want to necessarily trade it three times right maybe what's your thoughts on that like trading a key level how many times would you trade it yeah, well, basically, you know, um, the saying is the more often it gets tested, the stronger it is, right? So, so that, that's what you learn if if you prepare for CFT, for example, or, you know, if you if you read all the books. But I totally agree. I mean, once in a while, it, it just breaks and then you're screwed, right? So why not just going one time, two times, maybe three times, but then you can think about the position size as well. I mean, it's risk management. Yeah. So basically, that's that's it. I mean, in general, what we are looking at right here is that um, we did this discussion about the consolidation zone, and this is a perfect example also how it builds and how you can trade it. And also, yeah. I really love, Cameron, that you talk about being patient, you know, because usually yeah. people just see breakout, just jump in, just to realize that they were the, yeah. the, the very last ones entering the market and being screwed again, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Because, you know, the market's going to come, or not always, but it's going to come back to value areas yep. where it will attract new buyers. And all of these guys that got in on the news are all going to be taken out. And yep. now, you know, you know, the big money's, the big money's coming in. So, yeah, I think, I think it is. It's, it's the key thing for myself is just knowing the setup. Uh -huh. sticking with my plan of going okay that's the level i want to get in and sometimes i can be a little bit idealistic i can be right. a little bit very look this is yeah. the most beautiful level to get in and yeah. guess what level doesn't happen but they do happen yeah so you know just camp out for the right for the right trade and look it happened yeah and then what i Cameron, what i really love about this is when you look at the chart it's far away from being complicated, you know, it's there's, I mean, it's not rocket science. It's just, it's just having one line, you know, and, and basically it's exactly that line. I just, just draw into the chart as well. You know, it's one line done. And mm -hmm. if you look at what happens in, the, in that line, okay, you can draw some conclusions from it and you can find your traits as well. And this is very, very, very important. I feel like uh, to understand as a trader. To have all the patience to wait until the you know the the impulse move just corrects until a certain level. 
that's basically it. And you can add candlesticks if you like. I would always do that, but it's not necessary at all, right? No. Well, I think I think then it comes into maybe some stuff that we've talked talked about before. Is like knowing where the the for myself, I would call it a value area is. But then, how are we going to get into the trade? How are we going to risk manage the trade? Where are the proper targets and so on? And there's there's a million ways to do that, right? But the exactly. most important part is that above this level, the market's hugely prop, uh, hugely positive, yeah. and it's potential upside momentum. Because if we just look here, look what happened before that, you've just got a channel here as well, right? So maybe quite tight, but and it broke out a little bit. But the market just moved sideways from the 17th of January until the 23rd. Yeah. And we waited for the breakout. And <laughs> perfectly, the breakout is now support. True. And you can see how the market. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's then just knowing how to enter and, and you know, you know many ways to do that, either from a Bollinger Band, we, we could zoom in here for sure. And, and even on the hour chart, which, you know, I probably trade on a little bit lower time frame. But for people that don't have time uh, or want to trade higher time frames, look at how you've got beautiful Bollinger Band reversals in this area here. Right. Look at that. So you could wait for this, take a break of this put your stops to below here and move move up. Another Bollinger Band reversal right here. Uh -huh. Comes out of the Bollinger Band, closes back in, a break, yeah. away you go. Yeah. You know, never ever coming anywhere close to threatening the stop. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically it. But, you know, coming back to patience, I mean, we're looking at the 60 minutes chart. So the problem basically usually is that people miss it. <laughs> you know? So <laughs> you look at the crowd in hindsight, Absolutely. it's like, yeah. oh, wow, well, there's a fortune in it. But in, in reality, it's like, oh, well, I'm not there at midnight, you know? So how to solve this? Do you, do you have a limit to just place an order and see if it just gets filled or not? Or what's going on? Yeah, I think I think there's various various ways. I mean, again, I think it depends what time frame you trade on. Uh, I'm normally around for the Asian and European session. Right. Uh, and look, I mean, there was one to two hours here, and I think this was this was right on the European Open. Yeah. So, you know, for for me, I'm definitely around. Uh, right. And then this one was. Uh, sorry, this is 10 o'clock. So this is 10 o'clock UK. So 11 o'clock Europe. So that's not an issue. Uh, nice. This one here, you have from the London Open to six o'clock in the evening to get in somewhere there, depending on your strategy. You know, look, prices, you could get in somewhere there. Uh, yeah. And maybe I'm being a little bit loose with it, but but, you know, normally... Again, the key thing for me is the value area. And then you choose the mechanism how to get in. That's something I always say to my to my guys is that everyone can be really hung up on a, a trading pattern. Or, yeah. you know, that's the last thing you, you're looking at. Uh -huh. You know, if you want to do a job or, you know, you're taking a wall down. Firstly, yeah. you're taking the wall down. Then you look at what tool you're going to use to take the wall down, right? And maybe that's not the best analogy, but, you know, it's, yeah, the, but I it's, got your point. it's the last part of the story of, okay, the key level is there. What's the action doing? How should I approach this? Uh, what time do I have? Do I look at an hour chart because I'm time poor? Uh, I even have clients that trade on four hour charts because, that's what they, they they can do. You know, they're they're in the medical profession. They can't look at charts all day, but they can look at a chart every four hours. Yeah. 
I mean, the easiest way also approach is like setting an alarm at a certain zone, grab a coffee when an alarm rings and just watch what happens. That, that's that's what I do. Tra yeah. Trading the, look, these lines here are all alerts and you just, you know, you just right click, set an alert and, yeah. you know, uh, set alerts for, for everything. And when they go off, they come on your phone, you get an email. Um, right. It's perfect. And sometimes you wake up in the morning, you've got a load of alerts, check the charts, see see what's going on. So um, so I, I guess the point here, Willem, is, is that I, I think no matter what your time schedule is, people still have the opportunity to, to trade. Mm -hmm. You know, either from a short term time frame, if you've got a lot of maybe more time. Or a longer term time frame if you've got less time, and and normally the people that are trading in the longer term time frames make more money. Yeah, I mean it's it's very tempting uh, to go short term. I mean it also has something. You know, I, I'm I'm not a short term guy for several reasons. One reason is well, you know, I'm, I have the illusion of total control. Of course, it's not the case. <laughs> we all can agree on that. But it's like you know, I'm I'm sitting. In front of my computer, I'm just watching the markets. I see signals. I can enter. I can close. I have everything like in my hand. And when I'm done, I'm done, right? But mm. absolutely, you're true. Um, if you look at the key levels and you give give the trade a little bit more room, it's the same thing. It's not as stressful, but uh, well, it's a different approach, but not really, you know. Yeah, and I think people need to just find their style because I know people, uh, I know people that are profitable with one style, and I know other people that can't be profitable trading that style. Right. Although it's the same, it's the same thing, um, and it and it is. It's a sort of a bit of a journey to find. Okay, am I better? Am I more profitable as a short term trader or, or a longer term trader? Wise words, my friend. Wise words. Oh. <laughs> right. Yeah. We already go into thirty. I know thirty minutes. So, okay. How has your trading been, sir? This this uh, this this year so far. What's been happening? What do you think? What's coming up? Yeah, it's Are quite going into recession. Is the market going to crash? What's going on? Oh my! Yeah, my, I mean, my trading is a little bit more quiet these days. So I, I have a lot of things to do regarding websites, some training programs. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm working also on some EAs for, for MetaTrader and other programs. So this is just, well, getting a lot of attention and time. So yeah. I'm really excited about that because why? Well, you know, I don't want to be that guy just sitting in front of the screen the whole day. Uh, I think you can totally agree on that, I guess. So, so what I'm really working on is that I get some, you know, some automated sickness in areas like that, you know, where you just feel like, okay, we have a level market reverses, we have like this candlestick, um, you know, this is a hammer out of the Bollinger Bands, this is my expander strategy, same like that, that I, you know, I get the sickness in an automated way, and also software takes care of, of that. So basically, it's what I'm working on. But what I really love to do. Uh, regarding this strategy, it's a little bit, of course, at the end of the day, we're all doing the same, right? So we all enter the market at the same levels uh, with the same idea, but we think we do different things, but we don't. So what I like to do is, you know, we have this this line here, this is the support zone we were talking about already. And just for example, what I would love to do uh, when, I, when I look at a chart and what I'm waiting for, a sickness and things like that, you know, this mm -hmm. is not really something I would feel like that's a reversal. You have a big red candles and some green ones coming in. That's not really a reversal. But what I love to see is that one. See, so you can you can just draw a W in it like Wieland, yeah. right? So and this is what uh, I get, right? So why, why I get excited because this is something I'm really waiting for. This is a reversal sign. This is a double bottom. and okay. Like double bottom, yeah, yeah, it is right. I mean, yeah. it's it's a quadruple, uh, quadruple bottom anyway. But I love to enter here with that hammer, 
having the confirmation hits once, hits twice, I love to enter here. And basically, well, of course, if you enter here, you feel like, okay, this might be my profit target according to the Bollinger Bands. But, you know, as things are dynamic and just moving, just where I have to wait until Bollinger Bands get hit. So this would be quite a one-to-one -one, uh, risk reward yep. ratio uh, after a certain amount of time. So, well, maybe I, it's, it's more something like that, you know, somewhere in between. I just watch the market closely. And again, this is something where I feel like, okay, I have, I have control over the trade and over the markets because still it's going down. You never know if, you know, the downtrend continues. So it's better to take some profits. Maybe you want to enter again, like here, which is more or less bullish engulfing, which is more or less, it's not really, but looks like a bullish engulfing and it works perfectly so you can enter once twice here you can enter this is more a heads up so we have like in in, in a short amount of time like three hours we have alone alone in this very short and neat area um, of consolidation we have three um setups to enter the market and to get some profits so basically yeah. that's what i'm looking for and if you have more volatility, you have a lot of more opportunities and also uh, more distance to cover with the trade and, and more profits. And if it's a low volatility, just go back and forth and up and down. So take some profits and uh, you're done for the day. So that's what I'm doing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a nice, nice trade there. And I think the thing is that, you know, with things like that is the the ability to, to you know, if, if you entered on that hammer candle, there's an ability to take one-to-one -one there, but maybe running 25% risk-free. Right. And then you've got the ability to add and then maybe even add again. And exactly. I think that that's something which is very powerful to be start to be able to sort of compound on positions of getting some profits off early, not even early, but like where you can get risk free or take 75% profits and then get adding into a trade rather than having to wait the whole cycle, right for it hit the Bollinger band, you know, and get out there with one trade, you could have had three, three trades. Exactly. Um, and you see, and that's, you're, you're totally right. And that's the beauty of it. And if, if, if you look closer to the chart, you see we are, do, we are doing the same thing. We are just looking mm. for perfect entry on a certain zone. I have some, you know, I spice it up a bit with the Bollinger Bands and looking at candlesticks. You, you have some, you know, some other measures to enter the trade. But at the end, it's all about getting into the market at a reasonable zone with a reasonable yeah. risk ratio in hand. And of course, with a proper risk management, and then you yep. can add and and lower positions the way you like, and you can do this the whole day, right? If you like to, if you like to, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's basically the point. So if you like to, and if you're happy, and you really really want to sit the whole day, the whole week in front of your screen, you're good to go, or you don't. Yeah. So that's trading, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then and that's back into you know you got to find your find your groove, find your style, right? Uh, of what works for you. All right, cool. Love that. Okay, my friend. Let's see. I mean, we're we're over like thirty minutes now, so let's just yeah. come to the end. And um, well, let's see when when we can continue. Probably it's like in, in next month, so March it is. Next month, let's see if we can get some yeah. questions. Yeah. And if people start asking us to be, you know, more present, we can talk about this as well. But I'll just keep it easy going. I love that one, not really being that prepared, just talk uh, how things come up. Uh, I love that. No, it's great. It's always it's always a pleasure. I really, I really enjoy it. So, yeah, let's do it again next month. See what comes up. See if right. we get some questions in. Maybe we have uh, another friend join us. Who knows? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm happy to do that too because it's always it, it needs to be fun. I don't do anything that's not fun at all. So yeah, we will find a lot of friends. I'm pretty sure. So this will be really, really cool. I love it. <laughs>